Aren't you guys all set? Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Meeting of Tuesday, May 7th. Would the clerk help me with the roll call, please? Uh, Chairman Harley. I am here. Uh, clerk Roberts is here. Mr. Hughes? No. Mr. Oichel? Here. Mr. Hammer? No. Mr. Homicki? No. Mr. Dean? Here. Mr. Allard? Here. Mr. Silver? Here. Mr. Edwards? Not here. Ms. Antoniak? Here. Uh, Ms. Murphy. Here. All right. So if my count is right, there's eight of us and everybody is participating. <coughs> All right. First item on the agenda is a public hearing. This is application 2012-19-Z, Lorenick Senko, seeking a special permit in accordance with section 3.5. This is accessory uses for outside storage of an oversized boat, 21 feet in length. Um, at 541 Jordan. Would the applicant join us at the podium? Yes, All righty. Just uh, so that everybody understands how this works, this is a public hearing, and the next one is a public hearing as well. And the way it works is the applicant will take a few minutes and describe what they're planning to do, what they're requesting, and the uh, commission will ask the applicant questions until they are satisfied or until they've got a gist of the project. Then we will open it up for public dialogue and, and public comment. Mm -hmm and uh, take questions if necessary. But anyways, when the public has asked their questions, we'll bring you back up, get some answers to those questions, and uh, see if we can close the public dialogue and close the public hearing, and then we would deliberate on the motion, deliberate on the issue, and, and perhaps pass or, or not pass. I understand. Okay, Thanks. ladies and gentlemen, my name is Lorenz Senko. I'm uh, at uh, 541 Jordan Lane, Weathersfield. Uh, 2018, I purchased a boat. 21 feet, a uh, little bit over the limit of, I mean, the regulations of the town. So uh, I did park the boat in the front of my uh, driveway, temporary. And uh, I, I received a letter from the town saying <clears throat> it was not legal to park the boat in a driveway with no special permit, which I was not aware of that. If I was aware of that, I was not going to make such a knock, but I didn't know, so I, I moved on. Uh, I did move the boat uh, as we speak. Uh, I, I parked it, in, I'm parking right now in a friend of mine in Hartford because I had nowhere else to bring it. And uh, I am here today to ask for special permit, see if we can work something out. Some we got to do something. We, we, I have, uh, I understand they cannot be parked in the front of the yard. I mean, is, but uh, I do have a special, special place for that in the, in the side of my yard, which I, I believe you all, you have the pictures there. And it's all gated. That's gated and uh, will not be visible from the street or other neighbors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have a particularly more difficult lot than others would have. It's a, it's a I corner do, I, Yes, I do have a difficult lot because uh, I am in a corner and my backyard, I do not have a backyard. Mm. If I had a backyard, that will not be an issue. We'll not be here right now, but I do not have a backyard. I have no choice. Uh, I had other options to park the boat in a marina or other places, but uh, I have friends where they own boats for years and they have a lot of issues 
that been stealing and viola violating the boat and you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to get this boat where I can visual visualize it. I mean, have it in my control every day, right. so I can so see what's going on. So, so the maximum length boat is twenty is eighteen inches, eighteen feet. The this maximum is eighteen feet. Yes. So, so if you were eighteen feet, you could park it in the backyard by right. Yes. Um, but it's 21, so you need a 21. permit. A couple of more feet, no now, big deal. <laughs> now the fence, the fence is in the front. Does the fence go down the side yard as well? Does fence it goes the in the front and, and some in the side yard, but I'm planning to fence it complete. Okay. So it will not be, maybe, maybe it will be visualized maybe one feet in the top. That's about it. So it looks like it's probably 10 feet to the top of the wind, eight feet to the top of the windshield, and it's higher to the, to the canopy probably, but... Would you say that it's eight feet to the top of the windshield from the ground? From the ground to the top of the windshield, it's about eight feet, yes, you're right. It looks like it's higher than the garage door, right? right. And the fence going around the yard is how high? Fence is uh, six feet. Okay. George? Yeah, you have a lot of shrubbery, though, going around the yard. Back, side, both yeah, sides? Yeah, we have hedges, yes. Uh, what, what type of shrubbery are they? Do you know offhand? No, never They're mind. hedges. It's the usual kind. The thing. usual yeah. kind, yes. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're and they're high. They're probably yeah. five, six, six feet. Something. That's about. Yes. That's about right. And they're on three sides at least. Everything but the front, I think. Yes, they are all the way around. Yeah. All the way around, yes. 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 So besides the fence, fence, Mr. Chairman, that's. that's Beside be besides the fence, we do have right. those two edges. Yes. edges you, yes. Uh, you also repaved <laughs> from the pictures of the. I driveway. did. I'm doing work right now. I have a contractor doing the work. I'm, I'm, this is not what something are you doing exactly are planning to do? I will explain. This is not something where it's going to be parked in the grass or make it look in like, you know, it's going to be complete. You know, I'm, I'm putting driveway, extending my driveway, where I'm extending my driveway from the front all the way to the back. That's where I'm going to be parking the boat. Mm -hmm. Would you have a problem? in the backyard or moving it in. You certainly get it by that big pine tree. That's not an issue. Uh, and getting it up toward your stairway there or your your backyard uh, patio area or something. So it just stick out there toward the side street, uh, which is, what's your side street again? Ridgecrest. Ridgecrest. Is that a problem, something like that? That's not a problem, but that's uh, that's not considered a backyard, and my property. That's the issue. Okay. I hear you. Uh, last time I asked, uh, I mean, I went uh, three days ago in the office right here, and I asked. They pulled the map out and all the things, and they told me this is not considered a backyard. Even even if something whatever, you cannot park it there. That's not considered a backyard. Well, my we, backyard we, is in my left. With the, with the fact that you do have two front yards, um, I consider that side yard something we can make an exception to. Thank uh, you very much, sir. We, you've got to, that's why I was asking, how far back can you pull the boat? I can pull away, back. Away from the side street there. From, from my gate, do you have the picture? You want me, you want me yeah. to come there and show you? Yeah, I, I see it, yep. Yes. So from... From the front gate, where you see the corner of the blue house and the white gate on the picture, I can put I can pull back m much as you want me to. Actually, yeah. <laughs> it's easy to say that you're going to pull it back. I'm a I'm a boater. I've been a boater yes. for almost 30 years. Yes. And if you look at it, the back of that boat, uh, the 21 foot boat. I haven't seen the boat, so I don't know type or make or anything. But Chaparral, 2011. What kind of boat is it? Chaparral. Okay. This kind. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, okay. It's right there. It's a, right. it's a black and white it's a boat. boat. <laughs> I didn't even see, I didn't even notice it. All right. To back that boat all the way in the back is, is going to be a very difficult thing. I just have a feeling that no matter what we do, if if you're going to back it all the way in, it's not going to be. It's not going to be backed in consistently. It's going to be so difficult. Uh, Why is that? It's very difficult. Why is it difficult? 
What's the well, difficulty here? I've been doing it for years. Are we gonna, uh, we gonna how long have you been doing this, sir? <laughs> I've been doing it since I was 12. I'm 44. Okay. All right. I grow up with boats. So, so I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I can sure tell. What, what, you're really just proposing to put it at the side of the house, right? In the well, side of the house, yes, sir. Yeah, gotcha. It'd be, it'd be extending the driveway of Ridgecrest in, on that side of your house. And on that side, and yes. And parking it to the, like, close to the house and not, like, off to the corner. No, no, of course not. No. Right. no. So, so when you... Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, and, and I apologize. You've got the mic, go. The, the fence that you're talking about, you're, you're talking about actually enclosing the yard and... If I have to, absolutely. Okay. I have no problem with that at all. The, the driveway goes up to your, your garage, and you're just going to the left. You're gonna I'm going to the left, left, and I'm extending it yeah. just so I can park the boat, yes. Right. Which that I'm doing work right, right now, yeah. as we yeah. speak. Yeah, so you're just going to... And your planning is... You're planning to pave it? I already yes. did all that. I already Sorry, dig yeah. the, the company already did, the, uh, did all the work. Now already. they're just waiting for the weather okay. to warm up a little bit so they can pave, pave it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so I saw that. I saw it. It was on Sunday. It's all oh, nice you saw it? Yeah, yeah. It's it's all nice and extended and everything. It's not paved yet, but it. it, it yeah, they would just the weather, the rain and stuff. They yeah, cannot yeah, do it. They can't pay. Nobody can do it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's pretty clear that it's for the side of the house. So, um, we've had this conversation before that these type of things go with the property. They run with the land, right? And so when we approve these, uh, this approval goes to the people you sell the house to, right? At some point in time. I'm not gonna sell the house. <laughs> <laughs> so I love it. So we so we often talk about um, constraining it somehow, right? And, and and putting a time frame if, if we were so inclined to um, approve it. So that at some point in, or rather, even if it's the next owner, right, somebody has to come back to us and we can talk about it again, right? So just just keep that in mind. Would would that bother you if we put a, a time frame on it? Uh, what it boils down to. We what do you mean three, by time frame? Said, if we said three years or five years, you got to come back to us. Oh, right? Jesus. Really? Uh, so so what, it, what it does is it puts a termination on it so that, you know, you may do a great job hiding this thing, right? Okay. But the next person you sell the house to doesn't. Right? Next, pers next person holding the house is going to be my son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so sometimes we try and make it run out of time so that you have to come back. That's all right. So just keep that in mind. All right. Absolutely. So um, anybody have any more questions or shall we move on to the public? Is there anybody from the public who wishes to speak on this particular application? No? Okay. So any additional questions of the applicant? No? Okay. Then um, could I have a motion to close the hearing? I move so moved. Moved. All right, we got a first and a second with the two of you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Great. Um, you're welcome to sit down. We're going to talk about it for a few minutes. Okay. All Thank right. you. So, so I, w I want to start. We, we've had a number of these um, questions of, of boats, trailers, et cetera. And I've always taken the position that we have a zoning regulation that says 18 feet, subject to a special permit. And looking at the special permit regulations, that we have to apply the special permit regulations. Um, and I just have a, have a problem um, with the, um, you know, the suitable location and the compatibility, you know, of having these things. And I'm afraid of setting precedent. Once you, you set a precedent that we did it for, for this type of thing, then are required to do it for another type of thing, and they were inconsistent. Uh, and I've taken the position in these, I think, all along that I've you know, voted against these applications. And I really think that we need to amend the regulation. I know we've talked about it, and I'm going to talk about it later in our, in our meeting um, as to you know, the nature of this regulation. So uh, in no understanding, it, it, this is a special permit. It's supposed to be a special permit. It has to meet the requirements of a special permit. And I just, I don't like setting the precedent. and. Um, I'm opposed to the application. I think they take a bit more of a subjective approach. There's some corner lots that are truly not suitable for this type of 
piece, but and I, I guess to this to this lot for this fence that's around the house and the shade or the the screening that's around the rest of the yards. I guess I'm less concerned here than I have been in other applications as well. So I'm I'm never really comfortable with the screening of a, a vegetative screening, right? So it, when I see the vinyl fence, I'm thinking, okay, the vinyl fence is not going to cover the eight feet. Um, mm -hmm. If the canopy's up in the air, it's ten feet tall, right? Um, so in my mind, I'm I'm looking for a vinyl fence that goes, you know, if the boat's twenty one and the trailer is a little longer than that, the, the silly things, you know, the vinyl fence should go down the side, in addition to the the landscaping, whatever it may be. Um, you know, I, I don't really want to push it all the way to the back. I think, you know, whether it's hard to drive it there, I don't know that it really makes it any less conspicuous. And you got to move it all the way around. I think they described it as to the left or whatever, all the way around the house to get it into the backyard. So, so this is a discussion of leaving it basically in the front yard, side yard, right? And at a longer length than normal. Um, so I, I've gone both ways, but I want to see usually some effort to screen it. And to, in my mind, that's a full fence rather than just the the landscaping going back far enough so that you're going beyond the end of the, the boat. That's kind of what I'm thinking. My thought on this is uh, based upon the uh, testimony of the applicant. Um, it seems the main <coughs> reason, the essential fundamental reason for uh, the submission of this application uh, was really twofold. Number one, uh, the applicant received a citation from the, our zoning enforcement officer, and that was his notice that it was in violation. And secondly, um, the other alternatives that he has relative to locating the boat uh, off-site, such as at a marina and so forth, uh, lies basically in the applicant's reluctance or act and anxiety uh, over placing it somewhere other than his own property due to the fear or the risk of vandalism. And I'm not sure that if that's a, uh, an adequate you know, cause to, uh, to justify uh, the granting of the special permit under our regulations. Um, so yeah, I, I, unless we have s something that provides, you know, adequate screening and a limited time mm -hmm. you know, function or schedule for uh, this uh, uh, you know, replacement of this, this, you know, this vehicle on this, this property. I tend to be opposed to it basically due to the fact that our regulations are clear. Boats 18 and under are allowed and uh, the general, I think the, the general uh, perception that I have in terms of the interpretation or application of the regulations is, is you, know, you know, unless there is you know, an exceedingly uh, you know, great hardship. public purpose or hardship to the applicant that would be uh, performed by denial Unless that you know that test is met, you know, such application should be denied. So I tend to fall uh, within you know Dan's um, parameters of, of yay or nay on such applications. Mm. Okay. Well, and I'm curious. If this is a, a curious question. You you had mentioned. Uh, uh, you both had mentioned uh, uh, adequate screening. What, what would Aaron? What, what more would you want him to do to screen the area? Just a curious question. Well, I would certainly want to see the you know, you know the boat fully closed or enclosed, enclosed. Or, or or hidden by uh, you know, foliage or fencing or something that that. Um, essentially uh, relieves the, the tyranny of the internal combustion engine on a, you know, on a nautical vehicle parked in somebody's lawn. Uh, 
And, and do we allow, how high of a fence do we allow for in? A, a standard <coughs> fence is six feet. Um, I think over six feet, um, the building department um, requ might require some special um, structural to, you know, for wind loads and things like that. We do not require um, permits for those, however, so, um, but generally six feet is a standard. Yeah, in my own mind, when I talk about a fence, I'm not necessarily talking about covering every bit of it. I do care about the relative height. So when I hear six feet and the boat's eight, <coughs> for the most part, you know, <coughs> that to the highest point, yeah. I tend to think of the six feet as kind of okay. Um, and again, this, in my mind, this is a side yard because it's a corner lot. It's just that much more difficult to hide it. Um, that doesn't change the fact that what's the hardship, right? I, I hear that argument very much so. Um, and uh, take it into account when the neighbors don't like it kind of stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So if your boat was 18 feet, would you be able to put in a truck in with the driveway? So no, at 18 no, it would still have to be technically in that other back corner, corner that because he's a corner lot, uh, there that's really that the be back, corner regardless. back corner regardless. Um, so th because it's a corner lot, he gets that penalty of having to put it in the farthest back corner. But he wouldn't have to screen it or anything like that. No, no. Okay. Um, we okay with moving this along? Anybody like to make a motion? Make a motion to approve application 2012-19-Z. And um, personally, um, so anybody want to second it? Just to get it started? Second. All right, thank you. My own, my own uh, thoughts are that we should extend, have them extend the, the screening, make sure that it's a, uh, a condition, mm -hmm. extend the screening beyond the end of the boat. So let's just pick a number, <coughs> 25 feet, you know, from the corner back so that, you know, we can cover the, the boat and trailer. Mm -hmm. From where to where, Mr. From the, from the corner, I'm from sure. From the corner, okay. Back to from the, the, from the corner back of the lot? Toward the back of the lot, from the okay. along crest, what is it, crest view? Ridge how, how Ridge crest. I mean, I was throwing out 25 feet, but maybe could 25 use. 25 feet, huh? <laughs> 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 but maybe it could use a little longer. I mean, if you put in the gates. Right? No, I mean, I think it would have to go back at least 50 feet because they have probably 20 or 25 in the existing front yard, and then this is 87. So if it's going to be either next to or behind the house, it would have to be at least 50 feet. So, so, so I guess. <coughs> Does the fence, the fence goes from the face of the house. So I guess I was thinking the corner, wherever it is, is yeah, for, for 25 feet the whole, back the whole from the face of the house. Of oh, the okay. side, yeah. Are you with me? So it basically right. gets, and, and we could leave it Not up. Not from the front, but from the face of the building. Okay. From where? From the, the corner of this fence on the yard there. If there's some other way to describe it that uh, Peter, because somebody's going to have to apply it, right? So the house is, it's just, just to do the math here, the house is 40, 45 feet back from Jordan Lane. Uh, the fence is a few feet forward of that. Boat's 20, what do we say, 21 feet? Um, Plus the trailer and everything else. Sure. Right? And so you do the 87 for the frontage along that corner. So, uh, so yeah, 40 or 40 mm -hmm. to 50 feet. 40, 50 feet from from the corner of the existing fence line down Ridgecrest. Is that what you're talking about? So from here so down so this the way. So fence, the fence line is here. Yep. Starts here. Yep. Would you be 50 feet there or would you be 50 feet from here? No, you we wouldn't. You would want it from the corner of the fence heading down Ridgecrest, not towards Jordan Lane to do the screening that you're talking about because okay. this visual is blocked already. Okay. So, so a number of 50 is being proposed. A number of 50 down the side yard is being proposed, okay? Mm -hmm. Just for discussion purposes. Um, and, and requiring that it be on a paved surface. People want it on it, do they, you know? The boat. The boat. Right? Okay, so that's. I mean, if he wants to put some kind of pavers out. Yeah, that would be fine too. Yeah. Okay, impervious surface. Okay. All right. That's. I'd ask that you guys consider that as a, an addition or an amendment to your proposal. Sure. Right. Mm -hmm. Was there a second? A second. Brian? Brian? No. 
Let, let me be clear, Mr. Chairman, of exactly what's going on. You, you're taking it from the front of this house, the, where the fence, there's a fence there now, yep. and bring it all the way back the side to the back of the lot. We're taking it 50 feet back, which is most of the way back. Okay. A, a vinyl fence, a vinyl fence six feet high. Okay, so you can't see it from the next door neighbor? So the rear neighbor is still looking through vegetation. Yeah, they can still see it. Right? Mm. Okay, well then. Yeah. They have these well, it's, fiber blades. It's vegetation, but yeah. it hasn't filled in yet. So you're not see seeing it as you drive, or you're seeing less of it as you're driving on that crest, yeah. ridge crest, yeah. and you're, that's the idea, right? You're trying to hide that corner, because that corner is a side road. I just again, I'd just like to indicate that uh, I feel for for the for the applicant, yep. for the voter. I, I really do, but we do have this regulation, and I'm just concerned about how we are approaching these things. And we're approving some, and we're not approving others. Uh, we're looking at it as special permit. I, I just feel that the regulation speaks for itself, and that we have to we need to as a while as long as this regulation is in effect. We need to be consistent uh, in our in our decisions. Well, we need to be well. In my Not mind, we need to in my decisions anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I guess in my mind, it's it's site specific too. And and I and I apologize. I didn't follow through with the one thing that I said that I really wanted, which is you know the the time limit. Okay. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I, in my mind, what's going to get me to vote for this is you know some duration, whether that's three years or five years, and we're back talking about it so that you know, oh, well, you've changed boats. So how big is this boat? You know what I mean? Because no, I'm not going to approve it if you're going up to a 23 footer or a 25 footer. Enough. You knew it the first time, right? That kind of thing. So I'd, that's be, I'd be more comfortable limiting it to a 21 foot boat than to a time frame because, you know, the, as long as a fence is there and as long as it's a 21 foot boat, I think, you know, that's the some of us right. will have made the determination. That we can live with that, but if they show up with a 28 foot boat, I don't care whether it's within three years or five years. Fair you point. Know, that's a different scenario. And, yep. and I guess, you know, just to kind of follow up on what Dan's saying, I mean, from a land use perspective, regulating this kind of thing is really difficult mm -hmm. because, you know, we've, we've talked about sending it to the ZBA, but it's not the kind of thing that you can get a variance for because you never have a hardship that requires you to have a boat <laughs> five miles from, you know, the Connecticut River. Um, you know, so that special permit is kind of the only vehicle available to to permit it. And, you know, it's kind of a square peg round hole analysis of, you know, trying, trying to make that work. So, um, you know, I understand what Dan's saying, but I guess, you know, the only alternative we have is either to, you know, not create the special permit opportunity and send everyone down to get a variance that has no legal basis for it or do the best we can. <coughs> I guess we can have a disagreement there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think we're going to hit each other over it either. But, you know, I mean, do you just think the CBA is a soft issue even? Well, I can't. Have you served? I can't do something just because I'm going to anticipate what the ZBA is going to do. I've got to make a decision what I think is appropriate under our zoning regulation. That's that's my. That's yeah, I mean, and what I'm saying is that if if we have it as a special permit and we're going to be the ones doing it, you know, we, we kind of have to do the best we can. Otherwise, you just take it out of the regulations and then send everybody off for variances. So, so Rich has talked me out of necessarily um, worrying too much about the time frame, and and this is a note for the applicant. You know, 21 feet is 21 feet, right? And 22 is not 21, and and it would require that you come back and go through it again, right? That kind of thing. The, so the permit would actually say approval for a 21 foot. So that's one of the conditions. So if you did want to have a larger boat, would you have to, you'd have to come back through the process right. if you didn't attach a time frame. So okay. it's not a, t a year, no time in there. Huh? So, so that's, that's 21. 
So that's what we're talking through. And at the moment, I, I guess we're not going to add that one. So we're just talking about a paved, a paved surface and a fence going back 50 feet from the corner. Mm -hmm. Those are the constraints mm -hmm. to hide the boat to the extent that we can. Um, okay. The other thing we don't want to do is encourage these large boats for us. You know, I mean, and there's a lot of them. And, and society could allow that. I mean, that's you know, stuff that you know, we gotta, we got to think about for the future. Mm -hmm. As a marina owner, I think boats are a good thing. I think boats are a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have, a, we have a positive motion. It's been seconded. Uh, again, paved surface. Six foot fence, vinyl fence, you know, that's fully shielding mm -hmm. to the dimensions discussed. That's that's pretty much it. Sure, the existing fences are vinyl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look, 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 look well, it was on fine. Sunday. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll go with it. it we'll go with it. Well, one of my considerations, though, too, and I'm on the fence on this, so to speak, uh, no pun intended, is that. In, in terms of the neighborhood, are there any neighbors that have issues with this with this boat park? Now, right now, we don't have anyone at our public hearing, but there was actually an email in our packet of, of um, I think it was maybe a Ms. Uh, Fiamma who had an issue with, with the boat. Now, I don't know if that was when she made the, um, she raised the issue when it was parked in front of the property yes, or if it yes, was on the right. side of the property. When it was you know, parked in the front, yes. So I would be curious to find out if, um, if, if the gentleman um, had any conversations with anyone in their neighborhoods. Have, have any, has I anything been resolved? So, so, so Yolanda, I appreciate you bringing me back to that because the record should show that we discussed the fact. Simba, Cinda Fiamma, <laughs> who did in fact uh, bring the, Sorry, the issue to either to the attention of the zoning or, or was it after the notice went out? I don't know if she generated the, uh, so the it's dated April of this year, so the, the uh, citation was last September. So uh, this was as a result of the application and the notice to neighbors. Um, so it's a recent. So thank you. All right, are we ready to vote on the motion? All right, all those in favor say aye. Or aye. And raise a hand perhaps. Mm -hmm. Aye. One, two, three, four, five. And, the, and nays. One, two, one, two, three. Oh, okay. <coughs> so it passes five to three. Just passes. All right. So you got the parameters, right? You need to finish the fence. You need to pave the, pave the, you need to finish the fence and pave the driveway. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm in the process of doing that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's going to take a little time because the weather is not being too yep. nice, you know. Yep. But so I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to finish all that stuff. Staff, you can work with staff on that. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. All right. Second item for the night. Again, a public hearing application 2013-19-Z. Jordan and Ashley Price seeking a special permit in accordance with 3.5 for an accessory use for outside storage of a wreck vehicle longer than 20, it is 23 feet, larger than 23 feet. And this is at uh, 118 Broad Street. By the way, it's the 18 feet is still the same, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Regardless. The same paragraph. That's what I thought. All right. I get right. the gist. You get to tell us what you're I up get to. Get the gist. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we uh, purchased a 23-foot uh, travel trailer um, a couple months ago. Uh, it is parked in the rear left uh, corner of our lot behind our house um, at the end of the driveway. Um, and um, I think that if, if we were allowed to keep it there, um, we have some latitude to move it uh, to the right side of the driveway, um, which would be about 20 feet or so, um, which would require the removal of a tree, which is dying anyway. Um, and here we are. I believe there are photos um, attached in various views. So this is, 20, this is 23 feet in length. Again, the 18 is, is the, the limit. How high is this? 
this uh, vehicle? <clears throat> 10 feet, four inches, which includes, um, which is not the box height. Um, that includes the uh, rooftop mounted uh, unit for air conditioning, which is uh, probably about 12 or 14 inches. Questions? No. So, a question. Go ahead, I, oh, go ahead. Yep. Yeah. Um, the your next door neighbor uh, has refused um, an offer of a fence. We've offered so fence or fence. and shrubs or yeah foliage covering. Or so one or the other or both. Both. I mean, um, I don't. I, I don't really care what it is. Yeah, um, and I don't think both are gen generally speaking necessary. Would it be one high enough one. to screen this? So, green emerald arborvitae, um, which can grow to you know yeah, ten to fourteen feet, um, would cover it, um, I believe. A uh, six-foot fence wouldn't, but you know it all depends on what the. Um, you know, w what the issue is, is it reducing visibility? Is it eliminating visibility? Um, so depending on what that is, you know, a different solution would, would fit in different scenarios. But from our perspective, we would offer either or both. Okay. Well, is there, what would you explain to the commission members, I've been down there and seen what's there, um, why you can't move it back further? So the lot is, so, so where it is, it's a, it's a reverse <coughs> L-shaped lot, right? So um, it's up against the rear fence of our property line behind the home. There is, to the right of the home, there is a larger track that goes back further. The trailer is eight feet wide. And currently we have a seven or eight foot gate access to the rear yard. So width is an issue to get it back into the rear portion of the yard right now. There's also a uh, barn uh, that sits in the driveway. Behind that is a, um, a uh, uh, swing set. Uh, and so the articulation of the trailer, trying to get it through that space, even if we could get it through the gate, is not yeah, feasible you, at this stage. You could take down that fence or that gate or widen it, right, technically? We um, no, could not widen the gate, no, because it's on the property line. Screening along there and Arborvitae or something, and yet, you know, you could do that. Too. We couldn't do that because that our neighbor's property, our corners meet right there, so we couldn't. Right, it's on the gate is on the property there. line. Oh. Okay. Those where that where that stockade, that six foot fence meets I'm our corner. I'm not sure points. I saw it that way when I was there, but I don't see everything, so and that's not all. So thank you. Sure. Good looking channel for me right at the moment, anyway. Wanda. Well, I guess. My simple question is, why not store the trailer somewhere else? Why not just put it in a storage facility? Because I have five that? mouths to feed, and you know, spending five hundred dollars a month to store the trailer isn't ideal. Um, so it, we'd have to go to um, a place that that would have a, a storage space large enough. Yep. Um, but to be honest with you. The whole genesis of getting this trailer was to have a more affordable <laughs> way of spending time as a family together and traveling and vacationing. And um, to me, you know, that, that starts to defeat the purpose. And I'm, I'm being 100% honest with you. Yeah, that's good, because I'm asking you an honest question yeah. as well, so that's good. Yeah. Um, so I guess another question I would have is, um, were you planning on use on storing this trailer all year uh, in that side yard? Um, I think certainly in season it's 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 preferable. I think we'd be open to a seasonal um, gotcha. um, storage, but we were, you know, before coming here, um, to be honest, we didn't yeah. think twice about it. Yeah. Um, and, and the original plan would be to leave it there. But understanding the circumstances now, um, storing it off-site for the winter or something like that, uh, would be an option. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. I, I just want to ask. What, um, so you can't store it behind the barn. I, I was trying to understand. I couldn't walk because it was okay. raining on Sunday. So you, I didn't we can't maneuver it back. back the way there, it's currently The way structured. our property is laid out. Yeah. Um, 
it's just impossible to, you know, once you've had to hook a 23 foot trailer up to my car, you're talking about maneuvering how many feet altogether. Sure, just turning that yeah, corner. 30, is 38 a, feet, is 37 feet. Um, you know, also I think if we're thinking about community wise, the, the level of visibility from that spot to the community is exponentially larger than where it is right now. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's what? Exponentially larger than what it is right now. On the far side of the barn, which is basically yeah. right in the center of our yard. Back by the playscape? Oh, yeah. In my mind, it's back by the playscape that it, you would be trying to get it. Oh, okay. So you're saying not, not I'm um, thinking the behind the barn the and other. the rear of the barn because the barn faces oh. towards, okay, you're saying in the, the rear lot. Yeah, I, I still think it's more visible from back there. Um, it couldn't go right behind the barn because there are trees uh, back on the left side of, of the property. So it would have to go on the right side of the property where there's no coverage. What do you mean no coverage? No fence? No uh, shrubbery? There's nothing correct. there. Yep. That's correct. Yep. But you were offering to put up next to her, um, next door neighbor, yep. you're willing to put up a fence there and such. Sure. That's inconsistent, my your answer. Well, the, the, the issue right now is, is access to the back, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to get it back there first, and then we could put you know, a fence or, or, or some, some foliage up. Mm -hmm. I, I've walked both parcels. I was there on Sunday in the rain. <laughs> and um, I, I would say that uh, walking into your neighbors and the Keene property, um, even if you had a fence with the, the gardens which have been there, obviously you can see those gardens. They weren't something that was placed there yesterday. Those were gardens that were planted years and years ago before you folks moved there. And they had a large outdoor usage you know, in that property because of the gardens and, and the financial um, money they put into those gardens. And I think that the, the visibility of the trailer five feet from the center of where the socialized, they've been socializing, obviously, the table there, uh, you know, for outdoor dining, et cetera, I think would be a distraction and take away from the value, you know, of the, of the lot. Here again, you've heard my, I just, you know, put yourself in the position of the neighbor next door who has spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and they're landscaping and they're gardening, and all of a sudden they have this big thing they're looking at. Which is why we offered what we felt was an, an appropriate solution to alleviate visibility. Uh, I, now, not for nothing, yeah. we have done nothing since we moved to our house but improve it. So you referencing her spending tons mm -hmm. of money on a garden, which is great. I think her house is beautiful. I do. I admire the fact that she has a lot of time to spend outside and money to improve her house. Now, not for nothing, but we have done the same. We knocked down a barn that was falling down and was a safety hazard to the community. I can agree with that. We've done nothing but improve the value of our house and the houses that surround us. We painted our house. We put in new windows. We took down chimneys that were falling down. We repointed the basement, replaced all the HVAC equipment. We've literally done nothing since we moved in but dump money into our house. Now, asking for to park something that's five feet longer than, than what's allowed we don't think is totally like out of, we don't think we're coming like, you know, we're not asking to park something that's 35 feet long. It's, it's just five feet. And what we've offered is to put up a fence. We've offered to put up arbor bites that in just, you know, maybe a year or two would be tall enough. We planted them at our old house in Glastonbury and they were 10 feet high, you know, within a year or two. So I do think that we've attempted to come to an appropriate solution. So I just I want to make sure that we're not I, I, we're not preferencing one person over another because of our situation. I, That's I all. appreciate that, but you've heard my for from my reading of the uh, the regulations, uh, but especially in this case uh, where you have neighbor, uh, we have two neighbors who have uh, come forth with a letter here this evening from a couple of you know, neighbors who have opposed this, and, and given uh, the size of the vehicle. Uh, even if I thought it was appropriate to grant these things, this is not the one that I would be in favor of. Right. You should also have several letters in your packet of neighbors who support us. So, so I, 
am going to suggest that we let the public speak and then we'll check the box. I'll see which one of the neighbors are already here, right, before I go reading all the letters, okay? So unless there's a specific question to ask of the applicant at the moment, let's move on to the public. All right. So if you folks would uh, grab a seat and we'll start going around, all right? Either one of you like to join us? <coughs> if you could start by introducing yourself. Sure. Your address. Uh, Beth Riley, I live at 12 Hubbard Place in Old Weatherfield. Um, I'm here to speak in support of the Price family and keeping their camping trailer on their property. Uh, we've known the Price family for a number of years. Uh, we consider them to be some of our closest friends. We hold a lot of the same values about raising our kids and making fun family memories. And what a better way to do this than camping, right? Um, I'm concerned with the complaint against them for multiple reasons. First off, this is not an Uncle Eddie trailer from Christmas Vacation. It's a beautiful, brand new, pristine camping trailer uh, that's being uh, kept tucked away in the very back of the driveway and far away from the street. Um, after learning of the neighbor's complaint, like you've been talking about, they offered to create landscaping and a fence, both of which they did not need to do. Um, after the complaint was registered with planning and zoning, the prices have uh, observed several people on this commission looking at the camper and their property and then promptly walking into the neighbor's house. Um, they weren't offered the same privilege. I don't think they were spoken to or no one came into their house. So I hate to think that uh, this decision um, coming up may be biased in any way. I hope the planning and zoning board rules in favor of this family. Uh, the Price family has invested a lot of time and money into their house, yard, and barn. Uh, they're making Weatherfield a more beautiful place. Uh, they're building strong roots here, and I think uh, we should do everything to keep young families like this one. That's it. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Suzanne Barton, 55 Main Street in Old Weathersfield. I walk the Broad Street Green or drive the Broad Street Green every day. We're there often with our kids um, right on the green. And I didn't even know, I know the price as well, but I didn't even see the trailer at their house for several weeks until after they bought it. Um, and I think that goes to show that it's actually pretty well hidden on their property from the community. So it is unfortunate that this has become a neighbor's dispute, but it is just that for as far as the community is concerned. The length of the trailer is only seen from essentially one person in the community, and it's unfortunate that is the case, but that is the case. The length of the trailer is not viewed from the public. When you look down the driveway, you see the width of the trailer and not the length. It could be a four foot by however foot wide trailer and that view would be the same to the community. And that's what's important here. The fact that, so right now we have, if we look at the lengthwise, we have the prices who want the length and we have the neighbor who is upset with the length, but we really should be looking at what the community views and ignoring those two facts, quite frankly, in my view. And from the community, you only see the width of the trailer down the street. You don't see anything else but that backside. Um, and the only view of it is directly down the driveway. Um, so the fact that it is being disputed in general when if it was a four foot trailer, the community would have the same view of it is a little absurd. And so I'm in 100% support of them having this trailer. I understand the restrictions as far as how the restrictions and the law is set up and how that makes this process a little bit frustrating for you guys and, and how it works, but in this situation, the view from the community is really quite limited. Um, your last name again, please? Barton, B-A-R-T-O-N. Thank, Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else? My name is Justin DeMarco, 12 Middletown Avenue. 
Um, I do not know the Price family that well. I do know of them. Uh, we've recently met, both have young families, um, and I too, and with my family, do walk the green on a regular basis. And one of the reasons why we moved to Old Weathersfield is because of the, the historic beauty of it. Um, and to tell you the truth, um, we too did not notice there was a trailer there. Um, every time we walk by um, the Price's house, we admire the um, upgrades that have happened over the years, most recently with the beautiful uh, barn that's standing there. Um, you know, I think one of the things that's missing from this conversation, and I, I think the, the vote conversation is very interesting, is that um, though I do, you know, Mr. Silver, I do agree with you on setting precedent, I also do think we need to bring a level of reasonableness into the conversation as well. Um, I was sitting there joking to myself saying, well, this is interesting because if we camouflage the boat, would that solve the problem? And that's kind of obviously satire, but the camper that's sitting there right now is actually camouflaged, um, in addition to the shrubbery that is around it. Um, I honestly, being a community member, I can't see anything with that trailer decreasing the value of our homes. In fact, there are several other things that are happening right now in the community that are gonna be far more detrimental than a trailer. Um, and I would just strongly urge you to consider how reasonable we're being with, with this trailer. Thank you. Thank you. Justin's a little taller than me. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Elise Black. I live at 54 Middletown Avenue. Um, and before I actually met the Prices, I was obsessed with their house. Um, it's like the prettiest house on the green, a gray house with yellow doors. And I was like, babe, can we paint our doors like a pretty color? I want to be like them. I don't know who they are, but they're amazing. Um, so, and they are actually amazing. I think what they've done in terms of offering to Judy what they could and what they felt was appropriate was a grand gesture and shows who they are as humans. But aside from that, as the community member, I walk the green every day. I hope you're in the town walking contest if you walk the green every day, people, um, because we need all the points we can get. We're trying to beat the other towns. Um, I literally walk 30,000 steps a day in this neighborhood. And I didn't notice it until Ashley invited me over after a mom's group that we're a part of. So I, I totally understand from a neighbor's perspective how offensive that could feel and how that could feel in your yard or in your sight line. Um, also, there was a fallen down barn for so many years that was not being required to be torn down. That was originally in the sight line. So if you're comparing apples and oranges, certainly a beautiful, brand new, gorgeous trailer is a much better sight to see than would be a falling down barn. Um, from the community standpoint, as other people have pointed out, you really don't notice it from the street. You really don't see it unless you're like me, staring at their house as you walk by and looking up their driveway and being really nosy. Thanks for letting me in. Um, otherwise, you really don't see it. And so from a community standpoint, it really has no effect. From a personal family standpoint, um, I was raised in a family of five. We didn't get to go on a lot of vacations or do a lot of things other than camping because you just can't afford it. And it's getting harder and harder. And so for Ashley and Jordan and their children to have that opportunity, to have that at their fingertips, to be able to pick up on a weekend when things are crazy or the boys need something or whatever and go outside and give them what they need as children and as a family, you can't put a price on that. So arborvitaes or a fence or whatever the agreement is and whatever you as the committee feel is necessary um, would be a beautiful thing for this family and for their ability to do what they want and need as a family in order to raise their children the way they see fit. And that's a big deal in this community. Um, raising a family in this community is not easy, as just mentioned, especially these days. And so to have that opportunity to be able to throw them in the trailer and pull out of their driveway, um, I really don't think you can put a price tag on that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. My name is Judy Keene, and I am the neighbor that, um, I live at 126, 126, 128 Broad Street. It was originally a two family. Um, I take no pleasure in being here today, um, as this is a beautiful family who I have enjoyed since they moved in three years ago. 
Their boys remind me of the days when we were raising our five boys on the green. We have been good neighbors for each other, I believe, and to my delight, they have extensively renovated their historic home. However, I was blindsided one morning as I looked out my window to find a recreational vehicle 50 to 60 feet away from my door. I believe that the RV is 23 feet long, and I thought it was 11 foot 4 inches tall, but Jordan said it's, it's not. Where is he? <laughs> um, they said it was 10 foot um, 4. I know that they will have many fun adventures in the RV, but I also take great joy in my yard and with the proximity and the mass of the RV leering down over me, I've not had any interest in gardening this spring. My heart literally sinks when I walk out the door and have to force myself to do anything in the yard. The prices know how I have invested, how invested I am in the yard and the gardens. They frequently, frequently commented on how beautiful they are and how much time I spend on them. I welcome their children to visit the fish pond and the little playhouse that I have in the yard. I hope that in this case, they just overlooked the impact that it would have had on me in their zeal for summer entertainment with their children. As a retiree, I now have the time to share my gardens with my family and friends. I take great pride in the growth and investment in my property over the last 40 years. If my guests and I were to currently eat outside at my patio dining table, the view of my yard and gardens is overwhelmed by the height and the length of the, of the RV. My table is less than 30 feet from the fence, and the RV is probably five feet from that. I do have, I do have pictures, because I know that all the commissioners were unable to come to the yard to see. And, um, I think that this speaks for itself. This is taken from my, uh, the barn is here, my barn. My frontage is only 75 feet. So this area of my yard is only 50 feet wide. And here's my table. I took it from just on the other side of the table. And this is what we have to look at. Um, you know, the thing is that a boat is a little bit less of a mass. This is from the back of the, um, my back gardens. And you can see that wherever I go in my backyard, I see this RV. Um, it is massive. A six foot fence that has been propo proposed would only cover a little more than half of the height. There's a six foot fence behind and the configuration of the yard is crazy, but I do have the six foot fence that you can see in the back of that, and it, it would not cover the entire thing. And I have some arborvitae that I planted about 10 years ago on that side of the yard, and they're still not 10 feet uh, tall. Um, neither of those would cover the size and the mass of this RV. My property value dropped as soon as the RV arrived in the next yard. Theirs probably did too, but they have the Julie, advantage. Could I interrupt you yes. for a minute on that? Where did you come up with that statistic? Uh, well, about um, that? I invited I know somebody. I was reading it today and I wanted to get at yeah. it right now. While um, I asked a realtor to come and give me an, uh, an idea of how, percentage wise, how much my property value would have diminished. And she has said that when people are buying a house, they want to know what's on the other side of the yard. You know, that this would, and I know it's, it's anecdotal, but I did go on Zillow. My property value diminished $6,000 in the last 30 days. Theirs went up by $6,000. Um, or by three thousand dollars. I'm sorry, why did but that, why did that I don't go? know. I don't know. Well, they didn't say. But why in the last thirty days did it go down? I mean, um, okay, thank you. and I again, that is anecdotal. But okay, um, this is a historic area of town. Many homes with narrow yards and defining landscapes. In order to put up a simple porch rail, I had to go to the historic district commission but this is not regulated by HDC. 
Um, my, as I said, my frontage is only 75 feet wide. Most families in our area do their living on opposite sides, if you will. In this case, their living space is mainly to the south, where they have a large open area. Um, actually, in the back of this living area, there's, it's about an acre deep, they have um, a space that they could park it way in the back. But I guess that's um, not in discussion. Um, I don't have the luxury of choosing another living space. This is my living space that I just showed you the picture of. Um, because of our proximity in the, in the historic district with all these narrow frontages, um, we all have to be considered of our actions um, towards each other. I actually had a generator installed in, in my, on my property, and I had it put behind my barn um, so that the noise um, in a power failure would not disturb the neighbors any more than need be. One of the purposes of planning and zoning is to protect the quality of life for all of the community, not just those that see it face on. Um, this is one of the most pristine historic districts in Connecticut. Um, walkable and uh, bikeable, um, but it is, remember, narrow yards. Um, I ask that they not be allowed to store the vehicle on their property, but at a min minimum, if it's decided that it will stay, that they park it on the south side of their barn. And yes, the next neighbors will probably have to look at it then. It's just too close to my yard. Um, they have almost, they have an acre and a half or two acres of property. I, I think they could find another spot on the um, property to park it. And I do have something to say to the commission as well. Um, this uh, notice that went out to neighbors, it goes out to 300 feet, is that correct? It goes to anybody that lives within 300 feet? Well, the problem here is that the green is wide, so my neighbors on the other side of the street did not receive the notice. So, um, you know, in the future, maybe that's something you need to consider that the catch basin should be a little bit larger. Um, I think that's really all I have to say, except that I think that um, somebody brought up today that this is setting precedent, and it is. Um, I think now people are coming to the commission to ask forgiveness rather than permission, and I think it's gonna continue. I think you're gonna see more and more of these requests, and they will be larger and larger vehicles, I'm sure. If you have any questions. I think a couple of you came to the house, and actually nobody came into the house. The commissioners did not come into the house. Yes, go ahead. I was gonna ask, are, and you're against arborvitaes or any type of screening? Uh, you know, first of all, arborvitaes take a long time to grow. They, they just do not, and this is a shaded area, so it's gonna be even harder. They grow best in the sunshine. Um, the other thing is, you know, it's a living thing. What happens if one dies? Then you have to start again to grow up another one. This is massive. Again, if you look at the picture, it's just very large vehicles. And what was your view before? Before, um, before it was just into their backyard, into their Open yard. Open space. Yeah, basically. Little I mean, it's a, part, it's a place where they park their cars. A little bit of the barn also, or no? Oh yeah, I see the barn, and it's beautiful. The, the, I'm the, so the, the existing barn, though, before the, the, the... I saw the old one, too, you know. Um, but it was far away, I pictured it. It, it is it a little bit further away. Um, old Weathersfield, there's a lot of buildings that are old, so um, that did not bother me specifically. Um, this is right in my face. Um, so you. I know I'm only one neighbor, but um, you know maybe there are others. I think there are that um, would like to speak. Uh, Julie, yeah. yes. Um, I I see that trailer. I walked the whole area, mm -hmm. as I, my colleague next to me did. I don't know how far he walked. I walked across the street on Saturday, and I see that trailer. Okay, I also can see it 
from the south side looking north to the northeast sort of in behind their their buildings so it can be seen do you think if this trailer goes in there or is allowed it would encourage these kind of things throughout the green area the harbor well I think that anybody any others and that's my other question yeah uh, I don't know of any others um, on the green well everybody here keeps talking about walking it all the time and even I've walked it I haven't seen any so I thought yeah I, I don't know I think this is the first one thank you but again on the green most of the the properties mm -hmm. it's a very narrow frontage um, they happen to have one of the largest on the green uh, frontages. And as I say, if they parked it on the south side of their property, it could be, uh, it's probably, I don't know, I'm not good at measuring, but uh, probably 100 feet back um, if they were to park it at the very south east corner of their property. And uh, it would be visible from the street, but it is now. So. And I, I'm smiling right now because you told me when I visited and uh, that the, why is all the plowed land back there? And you said because they and you both lease to Anderson Farms, correct? Right, but that's beyond so what, that. yeah, that's no, beyond what I'm talking large. about. You're yeah, very large lots back there. Back they back. are. Um, it, mine is very long. Mine goes out behind their house and then out. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where they're parking the, in that yeah. little crotch. You, you would not want to deprive long-term use of that by Mr. Anderson, but no. uh, you still control that, you still own that. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, they could, in theory, park it back there, but it okay. would be, be behind their fence. I, I wouldn't expect that. No, 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 understood. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm only making the point that yeah. there's a lot of land. That there's plenty of there. space, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Thank you. And by the way, I do not want to have this be um, a wedge between the prices and I where are they? <laughs> you know, I, I really, I think they're a wonderful family and I love the little kids and um, you know, I hope they do have a lot of fun with it. I just don't want it parked in my, <laughs> in my face. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Rachel Pattison. I live at 132 Broad Street, so I'm next door to Judy Keene and two doors down from the prices. So I agree. I, I hope this isn't a, somebody referenced that this was now a neighborly dispute. I don't view it like that, and I hope it's not like that. Um, we just bought our house in 2017. We moved here from West Hartford because we wanted to live in an old house in a gorgeous historic district. So we moved to the Green and Old Weathersfield. And one of the issues with this is that if you're talking about the appropriateness of parking an oversized vehicle as to the site the site the site specific appropriateness this is a historic town green i mean it was the site of like the first settlers in weathersfield so to park a large recreational vehicle on the town green doesn't strike me as appropriate and i think somebody commented that it's not visible from the uh, to pedestrians but i completely disagree with that when you're walking north east or northwest towards our house the rv is explicitly visible from the on the side from the sidewalk and i think that's problematic for the hundreds of pedestrians in weathersfield who walk the green and also tourists who come here that you see a large rv parked in somebody's driveway next to their historic home and when we bought our house i wouldn't have expected that i'd be able to park a large oversized vehicle on my property I w didn't expect that we'd have neighbors who would be able to park a large vehicle on our property. Our driveways are really close to each other as neighbors here. Um, one of my neighbors, our, her driveway is right up against our property line like it is in Judy's house. The RV is visible from our patio, so when we are sitting eating outside, it's the front of the RV is visible. When we are at the far back of our property, behind our shed, the RV is visible to us. If you can see that it's absolutely looming over Judy's garden. It's really big. And I appreciate that the commission is inquiring about fencing or something else to cover the RV, but it would 
require a 10 foot high plus structure and to cover it. And I just don't think that that's possible. Um, I appreciate that there's an expense to parking an RV offsite, but there's an expense to owning an RV. There's an expense to purchasing an RV. So I appreciate that that's an issue for them, but it does cost money to own one of these. Um, I also looked at the regulation regarding the special permit criteria, and I don't think that it meets the criteria here for the permit. Um, I question the need or the, I, I, que I think that if this is approved, it really obviates the need for having a regulation because if an RV is going to be approved on the green, where is it not going to be approved then? Um, I just don't think it's an appropriate for the historic nature of the green, and I would ask that you don't approve it. Go ahead. Describe once more where you live in relation to this. You're across the green. No. Where? We're next door to Judy. Down to the right. We're the, we're the brick house with a picket fence right next to Judy Keene's house. Oh. Okay. So we can see, so our back patio coming out of our side door, oh, we can okay. see the hood of the RV from our patio. Yeah. And then when we're at the far back of our property, where I'm thinking about putting a flower garden, cutting garden behind our little chicken coop shed, I can see the RV from there as well. Thank you. Any other questions? Would you be able to see behind the barn then? We would. Yeah. I'd, I wouldn't love to see it, but I think it would be less visible to pedestrians who are walking. I mean, I think that's what I'm really concerned with. To me, and, and their property is so beautiful. Like, they've, their barn is amazing. It's new. I love looking at it. Like, their, their property is so gorgeous. The RV just detracts from it. And I am concerned with more, not as so much myself, I'm concerned with how large it is impacting Judy's property. I mean, it's really like a hulking, it's looming over her yard. But I'm also concerned with the pedestrians walking and knowing that this is a historic district and it just doesn't conform with the historic nature of the green. So I'm concerned with the uh, authenticity of the green, like of Weathersfield's green, not just myself. <laughs> Anything else? Thank you. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. Um, my name is Marcia Walsh, and I live on 138 Broad Street. So I am one down from Rachel and Greg, and three down from the prices. Uh, I want to say that I have agreed with almost every point I've heard here tonight so far. Um, uh, I do think that it's particular, it, it is a hardship that maybe the prices aren't counting on to have to store their trailer somewhere else or to park it on the east side of the barn. Um, I want to tell you that we are avid campers. We actually used to live on 24 Middletown Avenue. And you know in old Weathersfield, we, didn't, we never lived on 24 Middletown Avenue. We lived in the Crean's old house, right? <laughs> right now I live in, in you know, uh, the Griswold's old house or whatever. At any rate, that's one of the nice things about old Weathersfield. So I agree, walking around the green is just like, living in a park. Uh, I think that if it hadn't been for the memo, I would not have noticed, at least not right away, that there was a large RV in the driveway. And to me, that's kind of a moot point. From what I'm hearing and what I'm thinking is, number one, if there were a trailer parked in Rachel and Greg's driveway all the time, and I'm used to sitting on my back porch, which is covered, I might as well have this wall behind me right there. It's like all of a sudden there's this big looming thing. And yes, I can see where, unless you're putting in giant trees right away, it's still a, it's a blockage, right? So to Judy, I can definitely see where that would be an issue. That's one point. Um, it, to me, there's more weight to that if we think about who we are as neighbors than 
the entire community, as long as we're not talking about something that is a danger. So that to me is, is more of a, um, there's, it's just got more weight to it. And however, being a camper, there is no way I would want to get rid of that gorgeous RV. And I'd also like to say, I love your property too. I especially love the lighting. And I'm sorry I haven't been over there to give you brownies. I've been remiss or my famous bologna roll-ups, so I owe you one. <laughs> However, one point is if I were Judy, yeah, this would be kind of a problem to me. The other is, and maybe you don't know, but having lived in old Weathersfield between Middletown Avenue in the last five years on Broad Street, there is no better neighbor than Judy Keene and, and her family. I mean, going way, way back to when we first moved to Middletown Avenue, my boys and her boys were the same age. And yeah, I, I mean, I have this whole story and I can give you countless examples of someone with really true grace as a neighbor. And as a neighbor, she would do anything for you, you know, within reason. And you may know that already, but I just know that you can't ask for a better neighbor than Judy. And if I were her, that, that would be just like this looming wall going right up to me. And I say that as an avid camper. I would like to say, and I wish my husband were here tonight, I, I really can see parking it on the east side, and maybe I, I need a lesson from Mr. Santos, but I know what it's like when you have to back a huge thing up with your car. Um, there may be a solution where you could always drive up our yard and drive over the cornfield, just the edge of it. I know you're laughing, but that could definitely be a way to just pull it up right side there. I certainly wouldn't mind. So I'm not sure that that is really, in my mind, out of the question. I know you may not feel that way, but please consider that as maybe being an option. Uh, because my son has a pickup truck and he comes over from his house on Fairview all the time, drives, you know, on that field for various reasons. And I know that, <laughs> I know that the Andersons wouldn't mind because as we've stated, or we all know, it is our property. We could do whatever we want. In fact, I'm pretty sure from uh, talking to the Andersons before, if we even asked them to kind of grade a little way, you could actually pull that thing right up instead of having to back it across your backyard and ruin your lawn and your swing sets and everything else, the kids' bikes. But more power to you for camping. Acadia National Park is one of the greatest places ever to camp, and Burlingame is a great weekend outing. Um, but I, I do have to say I am in, more in support of what Judy needs um, versus keeping the camper right up there. And I think that there may be a solution that maybe you haven't thought of. Could be wrong. Thank you. Thank you. Brownies, you want me to do it? <laughs> um, Tom? Then. Good evening. I'm James Hockdorfer. I live at 34 Dorchester. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to be honest, I don't know the prices that well. I was lucky enough to coach their oldest son, Nolan, in T-ball a year ago. And my oldest daughter is lucky enough to have him in her first grade class. So it was just really at pickups uh, one afternoon where I heard about this, and I can't say that I know all the details, but um, an interesting comment was just previously mentioned how we are a community, and I can't help but think that there has to be a happy medium or a middle ground that these neighbors can come to. Uh, you know, I look out my window, and I wish I could make a couple of changes to some of my neighbors' aspects of their yard. Don't tell them I said that. but. Um, I just, 
I wish or I hope for, for the prices and, and for everyone involved that there could be some resolution that could be found to appease everyone. And we're here tonight to legally look at this, but I do hope for the sake of everyone that something can be rectified uh, in this case, only for what I know of their son, Nolan, who's a awesome kid. So um, thank you. Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. I have a question, not a uh, comment, but I'm a little confused about the 18-foot limit that you were talking about in the prior application and this one as well. Is Are we saying that you can get a special permit for a parking uh, vehicle in the, in the rear property uh, up to 18 feet, or we don't need a permit if it's below 18 feet. 18 feet is the limit where you need so I can park an 18 foot RV next to Mrs. Keene's house as long as it's, and it could be 10 back. foot four or 11 foot or 12 foot. You don't think that's a good idea, Tom? No, I'm just saying. In the, in you the know, backyard. Maybe that's a. That's in the backyard. In the backyard. Right. So maybe that's an option for the prices. They could trade their 23-foot RV in and get an 18-foot one, and we wouldn't even have a meeting here. Not right there, though. Why not? That's a backyard. It's a backyard. Just something to think about. It, the neighbors are still going to see the mass, this billboard, but it's going to be shorter. And it's going to be perfectly legal. Just something to consider. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Good evening. I'm Greg Waterman, also 132 Broad Street. Uh, Rachel Patterson's my wife. She usually speaks for me and did well tonight. <laughs> but I just have a couple of <laughs> minor things to add. Um, as, as sort of an aspiring gardener myself, um, I've admired Judy's gardens since we moved in a short time ago, and um, it, it shocks me to think that, that this wall can be just placed up right on top of a property line. I, I, I have sympathy for the fact that, that folks want to go camping and do their thing, but um, there, are, there are regulations around these things. It, it, there are criteria around special permits, um, suitable location, neighborhood compatibility, appropriate structures, landscaping. Our body are not going to grow in any period of time. My father basically created a super fun site at his house because he tried to grow our bravades and, and fertilize the heck out of them for years. It took years for them to get to any height that, uh, that became appropriate to really screen a place. So um, it seems like there are some other ideas being thrown around. None of them are ideal um, for any party, really. Um, but I think what we're facing right now is this, this vehicle is parked in probably the most obtrusive place it could possibly be, certainly for Judy. Um, to a lesser extent, us, we, we see it very clearly from our yard. And it's also viewable from the street on, on every angle of the house. So um, I'd ask you to consider that that at least in, in, the, in its current form, that, that something be, uh, that, that this uh, permit request be rejected. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who hasn't spoken at this point? All right, um, I was trying to take notes of, of the name specifically, but is there a uh, Peers here? The Peers? Okay, so uh, we do have a letter from Chris and Sarah Peers in support uh, they are at 145 Broad Street. Uh, is Jennifer Hill? I didn't see, didn't hear a Hill. I don't think. Right? Okay. So uh, Jennifer Hill from 81 Broad Street in support, and Townsend. We heard from right? No, no Townsend. Oh, I'm sorry. So Townsend also uh, 106 Broad Street in support. The Marcos are here. 
So I think I got all the letters that are in the file as well. So um, the hearing's open. Does the applicant, we have questions for the applicant. Let's bring the applicant back up. If you would join us again, please. I think just for the record, um, one question. Um, how much acreage do you have for your entire property? I don't know, honestly, off the top of my head, an acre and a half, maybe. One point five. Um, but I know we've talked about like, oh, you can go back behind the house where we leased the farm to Anderson. If you saw what the back of our house looked like right now, where Anderson farms, it is literally a lake. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, we were kind of like trying to toss ideas around as we were sitting back there. Um, it is definitely like you know, the Townsends on the other side of us our property and Judy's on over, we basically all lease land to Anderson. Where our property sits for whatever reason, it's like a low lying point. So like if I went back there right now, I would probably be like knee deep-ish in mud. I'm not a tall person, but I'm, that's a venturing how, a guess. How far back? Describe that for me. So we have, we have a plan. Yeah, you would probably aerial. have to, so we fenced in everything um, that Anderson is not using. Yeah. Um, you, if you had like, like Google Maps or well, we, Zillow, we do. That's yeah, effectively you could what definitely see. Yeah, you, can, you can see the line. Um, you can see like where our property lines line. are and where, yeah, it's, it's all fenced. Fence. And so it looks like yeah. the farm starts behind it, right? Correct. So is your property dry? So in, inside of the inside fence. Inside of the fence, the property is dry-ish. It's mostly but dry. As the further back you go, the wetter it gets. Um, you know, we, if you're looking at, if I'm just trying to see what he's looking at. So, um, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be looking over your shoulder, but so if you're looking at like where our property is and where our fence is, so where we have it parked right now is basically like if we backed it up straight down the driveway, mm -hmm. which we showed you pictures of how it's visible as you're walking down the sidewalk. We also showed you pictures how it's visible from across the street. Now we are not talking about a historic district versus, I know we, we talk about suitability, right? Um, but I think that that's really subjective. The historic district does not have the right to tell you that you can or cannot park a recreational vehicle on your property. So in my opinion, that's kind of like off the table. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're talking about where our fence is in an, an L shape at the end of our driveway, where we have it parked right now, it's basically like we backed it up the driveway and then we kind of scooched it over a little bit as best we could because I believe we share a fence along the driveway line. Um, there we have a few trees along the back of the driveway inside the fence. You know, I, I it's it's not ideal to park it right along Judy's fence. I can I can appreciate that. You know, we've talked about like scooching it over, um, and it would move it further away. But certainly, like because of the lack of width and mm -hmm. the way our fence and property lines are. Um, moving it over would, and maybe still putting up a fence or planting some arborvitaes or whatever, would still decrease its visibility to Judy, but it is definitely not going to eliminate it, mm -hmm. no matter where we put it. I don't know if that really answers your question. The, um, I just have one question sure. quickly on the maneuverability of it. Uh, a couple people have mentioned. Do you want to try it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I backed it down the driveway once. I it's mean, like, really? Well, you I have a truck, but I never trailer it again. It's weird. I shouldn't be even speaking right now. Uh, so if you're backing a trailer up, maneuverability-wise, trying to get it to the sort of the, the south southeast corner or side of the new barn that's there, mm -hmm. is that, I, I realize there's a tree there. That because of dying. where our house is and where our fence, kind of like just around the patio, it's we don't have a lot of depth there, mm -hmm. which is our problem. So it's very difficult and maybe impossible, I'm not entirely sure because we haven't tried it yet, um, to sort of, because our house, like, you know, here's our driveway and here's our house. It's literally on the driveway. And then it gets a little bit wider as you get further back, but it's very difficult to turn it in such a, without hitting the house or the fence, to turn the car without actually physically hitting the car. Mm -hmm. so. So I think to your question to make that achievable I think there's a there are a few things that we have to do one is reconfigure the fence 
Yeah, and there. I think that's kind of the point of the question. Is like right, so you, you'd have to kitty, right now it's, 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 a, it's a 90 degree angle off of the barn and back to the six foot picket fence that's on our property line. Mm -hmm. I think the only way to make it maybe look aesthetically decent and functional would be to uh, kitty corner the fence in a straight line mm. across from the rear fence, the picket fence to the barn. That would allow us a, to put a large enough gate there to get the width of the trailer through. <clears throat> Assuming you could maneuver it through there, I think um, the moisture back there would be a concern. So we'd have to think about putting a pad or something back there. Um, as I don't think uh, storing it on the on the grass <coughs> would work, um, especially <laughs> season like we've had thus far. Um, so I think that's what it would take, um, and I'd have to measure the angles to make sure that the geometry works. <laughs> um, but that's what it would take, I think, to get it to the the rear rear section of of the property. So, so I must admit that that's kind of what I've been thinking for a while is is just angling it so you're there's a couple cars in the picture that we have that's my that's my arm on the mic oh, oh okay. it's like uh <laughs> um so if you if you would show it i mean i think we understand exactly at least rich and i do exactly what you're getting at and that's what we've been thinking about the whole time why can't you get it back there um because quite frankly it does bother me that the community has has an opinion and and they're you know they have a right to an opinion Absolutely. but there's nothing more important than the next door neighbor who has mm -hmm. to look at this thing mm -hmm. and it, it would it would n it would not be something i would be comfortable with if my neighbor were to put it there i wouldn't even want the 18 footer but they have it but we all have that as a right right mm -hmm. the, you know the the, the regulations draw a line in the sand where do you start right so 18 feet is what was chosen years ago and that's that's where we start regulating them and i wouldn't want 18 feet if it was my property. So I understand the massing that close to where the usable backyard is. The farther away it is from where everybody is, mm -hmm. the smaller that massing is. So I want it as far to the back as you can make it. So, so I, I, you know, that's what I'm struggling with. Mr. Chairman, are you suggesting that we hold open a hearing maybe or, or while so Peter works with them on uh, this proposal? I, I mean, I, I appreciate it one of the residents even mentioned that right and it's like yeah that's what i was thinking right go home so and figure this out and come back so nobody has to say no yet right we, we get applications all the time uh that we find certain difficulties in approving and if the applicant would have an engineer we would have to the engineer go back and redesign it so it comes in with the parameters that we're talking about mm -hmm. um because I can say right now that I'm opposed to it. And I, right. I think that it sounds like there are a number of us you know, on this commission uh, who feel that way. I can't speak for the whole board because we haven't voted. But once we vote, if it goes, goes to a vote, that's the decision <laughs> and Understood. it's over. Have you gotten a chance to go on, on uh, Mrs. Keene's property and sit at the table on the patio and see what the view shed is from her? I mean, I think we, I think we get the idea. Cause but have you gone there? We have not, okay. no. And I, but I think that we, we can appreciate that. We are here trying to figure it out, right? Um, we can see it from our backyard too. So, so we I, have a patio behind our home with yeah, a table on I, it, and we I sit out there, it. and we're not, you know, completely horrified and vomiting that it's there. Um, well, I'm, so, you know, yeah. I. I it, it, so, I'm patronizing you, but you, you you're patronizing me. So I'm not patronizing <laughs> you. I'm not patronizing you. What I'm saying is to take a look at a different perspective. And what I'm saying is we have the symmetrical view from our property. We know exactly what it looks like from every single angle. So, okay. so, I, so I understand. And I'm not patronizing you. I'm asking you a question. Okay. Now, you may sound like I'm patronizing you, but I'm not. Because sometimes I like to see what that person sees and to see if, it, if it's obnoxious or not. In my opinion, I, and I agree with you, Mr. Chair, your points about being next door to, to 
to a trailer. And if it's 18 feet, I, I would imagine that an 18 foot trailer is not as high. And they're as all the exact same Okay, thing. okay, thank you for that information. Okay, but you know, the, the thing is, is here's the line I learned today at this meeting. Who are we as neighbors? And there is a community and I, I drove by your, you know, your beautiful, your beautiful street, your beautiful green, my beautiful green. And I, I didn't really notice the trailer. It's a very tasteful trailer, but it is large. And, th and the thing is, it's a difference of five feet. Yeah. Five feet may not mean a lot to some people. Five feet may mean a lot to some, to others. And, you know, when you have a neighbor, it's a different view shed. It's taking a look at it, you know, you're looking at it differently. Somebody may have been on that property for a long time, and all of a sudden, it's a completely different look. So, um, oh, I, I understand. I, I, so my point is, you know, I, I understand the mass. It's in my driveway, um, right behind my patio as well. So I, I understand um, that it, for someone who might take offense to that or uh, doesn't like the aesthetic of the trailer, personally, I, and maybe I'm the only one here, if my neighbor pulled up with a 23-foot travel trailer, I wouldn't think twice about it. Um, I think it all and, just depends and, on your and, and, and that's probably that's just right. the way I'm wired. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, can, I know that there are other people in town who have trailers that are bigger than 18 feet. And they, you know, maybe they come to an agreement with their neighbor. Or um, we maybe we can, but we're not those people. And I think that I think that we're here attempting to do the right thing and trying mm -hmm. to figure out a solution that will keep everybody happy. We thought what we offered was would help at least. Um, I know everyone keeps saying that Arbor Vitae would never grow there. I mean, it's easy to say to say no to something that no one's that no one's tried, right? Um, we're happy to attempt to you know maybe reconfigure the fence a little bit in that area to maybe try to get it into the you know further into the backyard or move it over in you know where we have it parked in the driveway. We're open to bringing it closer to the barn so it would be it would abut the fence on the other like on on our side of the fence um we're here to come up with a solution so um i don't want it to be like a, a banter back and forth this is not a popularity contest we need to just come up with a solution that works for everybody i think i think what we're struggling with is we're not here to find the solution we can only say yay or nay and yeah, you don't want I mean, us to say I, nay yeah understood <laughs> yep <laughs> yep right um, yes, if it's free. So I think. Sorry, introduce yourself so can the record can. Uh, yep. Justin DeMarco, 12 Middletown Avenue. So I, listening to this, I, I have to commend everybody because I think it is a civil dialogue. It's important. We are all, all neighbors and, and we should be neighborly. Absolutely. No doubt about that. Um, I probably wouldn't be standing here today if I didn't know that the prices were being entirely reasonable. In fact, I think everybody's being reasonable. And they've offered several solutions. And we have to remember that we're talking about 18 feet, a five foot difference from what's written in the paper. We're not talking about height. We're not. That just, and to me, what it sounded like was height was the problem. So we could put in sequoia trees and it still wouldn't solve the problem. It's, so I think we just need to be really reasonable about what we think the ultimate uh, decision is because I've heard several people say that it is not an eyesore um, and there's somewhere in the middle and backing it into a marshland is not um, conceivable either from backing it up or um, even moving it from where it is because quite frankly, you'll still be looking at it. So I think it's just important we, we weigh the, the pros and cons and, and consider what's actually written in the text, which is five feet. Thank you. Can I just yes. Sure. So it's Rachel Patterson again, 132 Broad Street. I, I can see the I can see the RV from my property. So I think that I have uh, quite a say in this. And five feet does make a difference to me because that's the five feet that I can see from my patio. I can see the hood of the vehicle. And 
frankly, I've, if I were Judy, I'd be devastated that this was parked next to my property. I appreciate that the committee's thinking of other ways, like could there be a fence or could there be a arborvarity, but unless the prices are going to purchase a 10-foot <laughs> arborvarity to cover the entire height and length of the RV, I don't know how a fence on that side of the property is going to solve it. Um, I, I just, I, I really don't like <laughs> the direction this is going that we're thinking about covering it. I, it it's, really, it's really looming and large being where it's sited right now, and I just don't think another structure is gonna cover it. And to me, there's a regulation for a reason. It's because it's a really big RV that's parked where it shouldn't be. There's a reason for the regulation. It's beyond the regulation, and I really just, I really feel strongly that it, it, it shouldn't be there. So, thank you. I have the issue with the RV. Um, I did ask them to come into the yard to see my perspective, and they did not. Um, and I think for those of you who are in the audience, I don't know that you actually saw um, what I see from my table in my backyard. I don't think you would want this in your backyard either. Um, it's very, very small area, and this is a very, very large vehicle. And this is from further back in the yard. Um, it's just right in my face um, in, this, in this area. Um, again, I suggested that they move it to the very southeast corner within the fenced area it may mean that they have to put in a paved or a, a gravel area to get it back, um, but it would be um, 100 feet from the street, and it would not be right in my face. So I, I'm pleading with you, let's find another way to do it, and I don't think going behind their barn is gonna work. On the other side of the barn, possibly, um, that might be um, acceptable, but at least it wouldn't be right in my back, my view. Thank you. So, so behind the barn and parked right alongside the barn, no good, no good either? Like where the swing uh, sets I, d are? I don't think you understand where their uh, driveway mm -hmm. is. Their driveway is right along my property line. Mm -hmm. right. And then... But it opens up and then there's the barn. But if they... It opens up a little, no, it doesn't really open up. It just goes straight back. They okay. turn, they have a, a driveway that, a parking area off the, the driveway. Okay. Right, so I'm not saying that there, there wouldn't be some construction involved. I'm just saying if yeah. it was parked yeah. behind the barn that they have now. Where the swing, set, where the swing set is. Where the swing set is? Uh, I believe so. Um, yes. Uh, but actually, where their chicken house was, it, but it's been moved. It's gone now. Like, is that a It's a It's spot? better. I think on the other side would be even better. Um, it would mean that they would have to open up their fence to have a gate to get onto the property. But, um, you know, and all the way back to, it would be ideal because I think once it's on the other side of the barn, people are going to see it more and object to it. Um, I think then it'll be visible to the community. Everybody walking by is gonna be able to see the full view that I have currently. It's just massive. But, it, um, but at 200 feet away, it's not massive anymore. Maybe not, but um, I, I think that, uh, you know, at least it would make my property feel as though it's my property again. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm going, you heard us talking about um, wouldn't it be nice if the applicant were to say, let's go back and think about it? So am I hearing that? Let's go back and think about it. Thank you. <laughs> well, um, see what you can do, all right? Because uh, I, and unless I'm reading it wrong, so, uh, you're not you gonna get a, a positive. to continue the hearing? In, in a moment, right? I don't, oh, unless okay. I'm reading tea leaves wrong, you're not gonna get a, uh, an approval, right? Numerically, so, all right. Um, so yes, I'll entertain a motion to. Uh, so made, Mr. Chairman. All right, to 
to leave the hearing open and, and you'll come back and see if there's another solution. All right. So can I have a second? Is oh. Is the time frame? Yeah, the next meeting. Two weeks. The next meeting, okay. Hopefully. Yeah. You've got to work this out yes. well okay. with the or town not. staff. Or, or not. Well, well it's two correct. weeks regardless. Yep. No, I just gave, I just gave them an example that going back and redesign what they what they're uh, what they're looking to do. Uh, we can't come forward with ideas. It's not our job or our expertise to tell you what to do. You present a, an applicant presents something to us, and we'll look at it. Okay. Yeah, nobody is suggesting that you have to hire an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, not, not this time. Not, not this time. I don't think this is one right. of those two. So we have a motion. Did, did I hear a second? Yes, yes, you do. Second. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Aye. Okay. So this is an open mic time now, so sure. <laughs> <laughs> Peter will work with zoning official, but the bottom line is it's just kind of in limbo for the next two it's weeks until we come back again. The regulations. I mean, we'll be here. I mean, and I don't, I don't want to. It's two weeks. It's, and then, I mean, I don't want to start anything, but regulations on real estate agents, we have rules and regulations in place for a reason. I keep raising them. It's 18 feet. I don't care if it's 19 feet or 30 feet. It's in breach. Of a Would you like to fine us, ma'am? Is that what you? That, is that no, what you no, want no, to? Let's, let's, let's not go there. Let's not get back. Okay. Well, I was. So, <laughs> I mean, we all understand that we have stuff. some work to do, and yes. we're going to go back and do it. We'll be back in two weeks. Yes. We Thank need you. to be civil. I, I think one of the things the question is, thirty days. There are certain statutory limits for the closing of a public hearing without a waiver. For sixty, there's a sixty-five day rule. Uh, so, but that will, will play for if right. it's going to go beyond that. Yeah, so we're talking about next two weeks, but you know, if you didn't make it two weeks, you could still have a, you know, the two weeks after that to go through. We'll, we'll, go, we'll go for the two weeks. We'll, we'll okay. try and get this right. done as quickly we as hope possible. You will. Thank you. Thank you. We expect this all to be resolved. Resolved. All right. Thank you. And uh, I hope we can find a solution. Sure, we will. Right. Thanks. Oh, I didn't actually vote. All those in, no, yeah, I did, right? All yeah, favor. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> You'll tell me if I didn't. <laughs> All right, uh, next item on the agenda is what? The, uh, minutes or, or other business? Do you have any other business? No. Okay, so let's stick to the minutes. George, did you read the minutes? Yes, I did. And they're fine, Mr. Chairman. I make a recommendation they be approved. All righty. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All righty. I suspect since everybody was there, there's plenty of people to approve this. Nothing else? What's this uh, DOT to present plans to connect the bridge? So there's a public information meeting tomorrow evening in Glastonbury for the uh, bridge uh trail over the Putnam Bridge uh, connecting Weathersfield and Glastonbury. Uh, anyone's interested, we just wanted to make you aware of it. Um, when are they doing one in our town? Why don't we want to connect ourselves to Glastonbury? Gross. It's a riffraff, huh? I mean, I Glastonbury. Told her. Hey, wait a minute. Do you yeah. want to go back to the colonial days? When we were all <laughs> apparently, they, to apparently they want to connect to us. Oh, yeah. So we should extract something from you. You missed pronounce it as Glastonbury. Oh, I see what he's doing. <laughs> I won't pass those uh, comments on at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Chirpak is running the meeting. He's actually, I'm getting old. <laughs> the babies are uh, being uh, uh, they 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 loaded in the new They eventually grow up, Tom. Yes. They do. Yes. And leave the nest. <laughs> All right. Um, is there anything coming up? That so this would be the only thing on your next agenda unless something comes in when that doesn't going? require a public hearing so um, just okay when are we going to uh, hear more about uh, the car dealership they haven't filed an um, application uh, yet you're talking about the there was an application approved by the ZBA up on the Berlin Turnpike for 
uh, but they have not filed uh, an application. They need to come in with a plan and you know go through the normal channels. So, is the property being used now for anything? Uh, uh, the one we're talking about? Yeah. yeah. This is not. This is not in Berlin Turnpike. Not in Berlin Turnpike. It's yeah, it I is, understand. It is a car dealership today. Uh, no, I understand it, but the, the, for the property next door, it seems like they're using it anyway. The, yeah, I'd, I'd rather you not discuss that until the application comes in. So it sounds like they just expanded. <laughs> yes. Well, that, you know, since there was a use variance, it'll be referred to us for review and comment anyway. <laughs> really? They do it yet, fellas? No, it's been in the regulation. I know it. 15 is. years that they had to do it. That's all. Be nice. Second. Oh, my, I, I was going to second that, that you already did. You already motioned to close. All those, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Uh, <laughs> 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 I'll do it half hour. Yeah, when the mic's on. Can you hit the mic? Uh, oh, yeah. What's the matter with me? Use variances. We can limit the use, but our use variances are 